Hey everybody, Ashton here with Gen Sense with another fragrance review. So this one is going to be one that's been getting a little bit of hype. It's been getting talked about a little bit. I know Cubano's already talked about it. I know my friend Joy has talked about it. Links to their channels are in the description. And the reason that this has been getting hyped so much is because it's supposed to be a combination of Creed Green Irish Tweed and Creed Aventus. Anytime you throw those names around, people are going to get excited. This fragrance is from the House of Armoff, and it is named Le Parfait. All right, guys, let's check out this presentation. You have the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration at the bottom, and you can see me in the reflection. At the top, you have the name of the house once again, nothing doing on the sides. On the back, you have the ingredients, and on the bottom, batch code printed here. So this bottle has kind of an interesting shape, as you can see here. You have the name of the fragrance, house, and concentration, and this is a magnetic cap that you can pick up the bottle from. As you can see there, it's a really good magnetic cap. So the atomizer is pretty much the same on all of the Armoff releases at this point. It works pretty well. And then on the bottom you have your sticker. And your badge code is actually printed right there, you can see it barely. That is the presentation for Armoff. Le Parfait. One thing I want to talk about really quickly is apparently our moth doesn't even know what notes are in here. If you go to their website, they have on the sidebar for this fragrance, the notes broken down like you'll find on Fragrantica. And then to the left of that, they have a paragraph that they've written about the fragrance that has uh, the top, the mid, and the base again, and the notes are completely different. The top is the one that they get the closest. The only difference is in the write-up. There's no black current in the top. Everything else is the same. The mid is where things start to get wonky. There's no rose or jasmine according to the write-up, but there is iris, lavender, and violet. So that's a pretty big change. And in the base, there's a small difference too. There's no musk according to the write-up, but there is sandalwood. So which one is right? Um, to my nose, the write-up is actually more correct. I don't smell any jasmine here. I don't smell any rose. There might be a little bit of black currant off the top. There's definitely some of that lavender slash violet. So the write-up to me is more the correct one. Anyway, whatever, let's get into this. This one opens up green. There's bergamot. There's a little bit of pineapple, more bergamot than there is pineapple. There's also a touch of black currant. I do pick that up. That's about the only thing from the note breakdown that I pick up that's different from the write-up. Guess what this is most similar to off the top? To me, it's closer to Trey Nui, which is a clone of Green Irish Tweed, so more similar to Green Irish Tweed. In the mid, you do pick up Violet Leaf in here, which is similar to what's in Green Irish Tweed because Violet is one of the main notes in Green Irish Tweed. It's really fresh, it's really green, all the way through the mid. And to me, this is, at a minimum, 80-20 Green Irish Tweed to Aventus. This is not a 50-50 split here. To my nose, you can pick up lavender in the mid, working with the violet, which makes sense because lavender is almost an unwritten note in green Irish tweed. There's maybe a touch of spice, but it's still a green, fresh fragrance. That's what you're getting here. In the dry down, you have ambergris and vanilla. Again, I keep harping on it, but it's basically a green Irish tweed clone with a little bit of Club de Nuit Intense Man or Aventus, whatever you want to call it, in the dry down. The dry down does have a touch of smoke, but it's really light. And that's really where that event of similarity comes in the most, in the dry down. So from that opening through the mid, to me it's much closer to Green Irish Tweed than it is Aventus. In the dry down you get a little bit more of that Aventus kind of smoke, like I just said. But that's pretty much the extent of it. Um, again, to me, closer to like an 80%, 20% split from being a Green Irish Tweed clone and an Aventus clone. It's almost like a Green Irish Tweed clone with a twist enough to make it more interesting. In comparison to Trey Nui though, this, in my opinion, is a much better fragrance. It smells much better the whole way through. There's like a really synthetic sweet note that I get off of the top of Trey Nui. I don't like that very much. My wife likes it. I don't. That is not here. Thank God. Performance on this one though, not amazing. Longevity in the five to six hour range, projection best in the first 45 minutes to an hour, then it starts to sit pretty close to your skin. But all things considered, 
I'll let that slide because this is legitimately my favorite arm off that I have ever smelled. In my opinion, the quality here is higher than Club de Nuit Intense Man, higher than Tre Nui, higher than Tre Bon, higher than anything else I've smelled from this house. And that's saying something because our moths are typically not something I would really wear. This is a fragrance that I will legitimately reach for and spray on because I like it that much. Do I like it more than Green Iris Tweed? No, but I think it's a really nice twist on a Green Irish Tweed style fragrance. And you would wear this pretty much the same time that you would wear a Green Irish Tweed. Spring, summer, fall, casually, you could dress it up. It's very versatile. So I may have pretty much crapped all over a Club de Nuit Urban Man, but this one gets a big thumbs up. All right guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this review was helpful for you. Thanks so much for your support. I'll see you guys next time.